A beloved store clerk is being remembered in San Francisco after he was beaten to death for trying to defend the business. Members of the community gathering for a vigil in front of the store where Johannes Tewaldi, Tewaldi excuse me, also known as John, was all attacked by a baseball bat or with a bat while trying to stop a thief from stealing water and beer. Drew Min is a family friend. He joins me now. Drew, thank you so much for being with us. But first, I just want to say my heart goes out to uh, John's family and you as a family friend. This is a tragic, tragic incident that happened that should have never happened. Um, but as far as the suspect being on the loose, how do you as the family friend and his family feel about that? I mean, are there any updates? Uh, we've, I've been in close contact with the police department, um, in San Francisco, of course, uh, but they said they can't reveal any progress on an ongoing investigation. I, I do, I do appreciate the, the condolences, mm -hmm. by the way, it's been a, it's been a terrible tragedy in the neighborhood. Do you think that the suspect's going to be caught? Are you hopeful? I have, um, complete assurance that the suspect will be caught. Um, especially since there were many angles in which the suspect was um, recorded on different security cameras um, and including the getaway car that he was in. Uh, so it should just be a matter of time before he's caught. Drew, is this something that you would have thought would have happened in your area? I mean, is it a dangerous area? No, the outer Richmond. I was born and raised in the outer Richmond. It's uh, it's kind of like the suburbs of San Francisco, mm -hmm. if anything. Um, just mom and pop shops, very residential. Um, I don't remember a time where there was a violent crime like this that occurred. So awful, especially. I, I mean, it's awful with any situation, but when someone's trying to go out there and and make an honest living for themselves, I know he had just recently had heart surgery. His daughter uh, was sharing that, and he couldn't wait to get back to work. He did not wait to get back to work. So tell us a little bit about John and the person that he was. Sure, um, John. John is a is an Eritrean immigrant. Um, he was very hardworking, very diligent, uh, worked seven days a week, um, and for the past three years was working as a clerk at that store. Um, and so anybody in the neighborhood who went to the store uh, saw John, um, and John would always greet us with a smile, with a, how are you? Um, I'm very friendly, um, just a very caring individual. And it's very self-evident um, how much of a good person he was uh, in just the case that that this incident um, unfolded. I mean, he was trying to stop a thief in a store that he didn't own. He just worked as a clerk as, um, and yet he stood his ground uh, to make sure that didn't happen. You know, you said that there there weren't any violent crimes in that neighborhood, and you know, but you can remember. But what has it been like lately? Has it has it changed at all? Uh, recently, crime has been rising in the outer Richmond. Most of it has been burglaries, uh, break-ins into businesses. It's uh, more reverberations of uh, rising crime in the city as a whole. Drew, are people scared, are, especially after this happened? Are, are people, even yourself, are you scared to leave your house? I mean, the suspect's on the loose. You know, I... Uh, Person, personally, I wasn't scared. I thought that more the neighborhood would be um, would be a little paranoid, would be a little scared. Of course, knowing that the suspect is still out there, but oddly enough, this if there's a silver lining from this incident, just one silver lining, it's that the community has come together um, even closer, uh, and we are not scared that this man is loose. If we see him, we will catch him. Yeah. Um, and that I think that's just been an astonishing and, and uh, inspiring 
thing that I've seen from from the community members and, and the neighbors. And I mean, in the video that we're showing from that vigil, you can see, I mean, he clearly touched lives. People are moved to tears at this vigil for this man that they probably saw every single day, especially with people, you know, they get in the routines, they see they see people, They pro John was probably a, a part of their day every single day. And to have him taken away like that is, it's awful. Um, but your big push is to make sure that John's story doesn't get pushed under the rug. So how are you doing that and how can people help his family out? Sure. I, uh, I just, I wanted to make sure that John, who's been just an integral part of the community, um, I wanted to make sure that his story wasn't just ignored, um, mm -hmm. that it wasn't just another, another crime that happened. Um, and so I, I did my best to reach out to my contacts in whatever capacity that I had to make sure that his story came out in the news media. Um, and the other thing that we're doing is me and a fellow neighbor named Tom Emery, um, and more recently, uh, another neighbor named Marjan Filauer, we've come together to start a fundraiser for the family, uh, a GoFundMe. And uh, we've been trying to raise financial support um, in these trying times, because John was the breadwinner for the family, mm. um, and they they can use whatever support that they can get. Uh, and as of now, I believe we've we've reached up to eighty five thousand or so. Oh, good. Um, but but even you know, however much more we can is it, it matters very much. Well, Drew, I'm so sorry for the loss of your friend and. I hope that they find the man who did this. Drew Min, thank you so much for your time. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.